Hello, everyone. Hello, hi. I think we're good. Uh, so today's topic is going to be craving your dog, even if they don't want to, even if you don't think it's a, like something you want to continue long term in a pot and have a positive relationship between your dog and the crate. So that's going to be our topic today. Um, or just joined, we have my husband and I have recently just had a lot of um, families that we talk to or see online or communicate with online um, that have just said, you know, I don't even want to use the crate. So why make them go through this? And just excuses after excuses. So today's topic no more anti-crate excuses. Why it's so important for your dog to be able to be comfortable and peaceful in their crate. Um, and unfortunately, the only way to do that is to use the crate. Now, I'm not saying you have to use it forever. That's not our end goal either. Our Mastiff is 10 and a half. She doesn't sleep in a crate except when we're traveling. So if we are going to be going on a vacation, most Airbnbs that we stay at require the dog to be crated when we're not there. Uh, hotels would prefer your dog to be crated. Uh, it's not required, um, but they do prefer it because dogs in a new environment, they have the IQ of a toddler. There's different sounds that they might hear, um, different smells. The stress of traveling in and of itself could cause bad behaviors that your dog's never previously displayed in a new location that could cost you hundreds or thousands of dollars and fixes and repairs for the damage your dog did during its stressful anxiety attack. So, um, so that's one, one reason. Um, another might be vet, like, um, hospitalized at the vet for a medical emergency. Um, so let's say they got sick or they got injured. Guess what? <laughs> the vets don't keep them free in the back. They have to stay in a crate. Um, and that's already a very stressful situation. Most dogs are terrified of the vet just because there's a lot of fear smells in the air. Um, a lot of other dogs that are anxious and stressed. Your dog already has a phobia of the crate and now they're in this very terrifying place. Your dog is sick. I would want my dog to be the safest, most peaceful, most comfortable they can be to expedite healing. Um, another reason, maybe somebody in your family, whether it's your immediate family or your dog, and they want to create the dog at their house or you need to create the dog at your own house because you have somebody very ill at your house. Maybe they're recovering from surgery or um, maybe they just had something done to them that the dog can't be jumping up on bed or can't be jumping up on the furniture onto their lap because it could really um, hurt them or re-injure um, whatever has happened to that person. So again, another reason your dog has to be comfortable in the crate. So, uh, let's talk about all the excuses we get on why people don't think it's important to crate their dog. Um, so if your dog has crate anxiety, and I'm talking minor anxiety, if your dog's like hurting itself in the crate, definitely get a professional to help you through this so that your dog can not get hurt anymore and still learn to safely and lovingly enjoy their crate. Uh, but if your dog has mild separation anxiety, that's just barking and whining in the crate, that's driving you mad and you want to rip your hair out, we get it. <laughs> when dogs come to us, they're not trained. So the first few nights that they're here for their training, it's just as stressful for us as it is for you because we have to hear that too. And I understand the frustration and the panic and maybe it's a little easier for us because we know how to fix it. And so we know like the time is going to be coming. Um, we don't start. So for those of you that aren't familiar with our process, we actually don't start training that kind of stuff the first few days because the dog has no relationship with us. They don't know us. We don't know. Um, it's already you know a new place. So we just kind of do a lot of um, relationship building stuff with them um, before we start layering in um, relationship type stuff. Like you have to trust me, the crate, the crate is safe. Um, and so those first few nights, the dogs are um, barking or days um, while we're not actively training them or having them out for free time, like the dogs do bark in the crate and I get it. Like we, we have to, to sit through that too, but I know there's an end game. I know that we're going to be able to help this dog overcome it. And we've had so many dogs that have broken their teeth, scars all over their face, um, scars on their pads or their, their paws, um, from bending the bars and escaping through the crate. Um, and so they've had a lot of really serious injuries and they've come to us for training and their owners are at their wit's end and they think their dog can't be helped. And we have helped their dogs to enjoy the crate again, to feel at peace in the crate and not feel like it's a scary, bad thing. And so that's super important to us. So um, let's see what other excuses might we see. Um, 
well, I want my dog to sleep in bed with me, or I want my dog to be free at night so that if somebody was to try to break into the house, our dog would alert us. Uh, well, your dog doesn't have to be afraid to alert you, number one. Um, and most dogs, most dogs are not fighters. So if somebody breaks into your house, even if your dog's free, they're not going to stop the burglar. They're going to bark and, and hide or run into your room to say, save me. Um, so if, even if your dog's in the crate, it's not going to make a difference. Your dog will still hear or smell unusual sounds or smells and alert you to that. Or if you want your dog to sleep in the, the bed with you, totally get it. I think that's fine. Um, we have a Mastiff, so it would be her whole bed and we wouldn't have anything to sleep on. So we don't sleep with Morgan, but I don't have any issues with a dog sleeping in the bed as long as that dog is respectful to you and doesn't have any dominance issues or aggressive tendencies. That's perfectly fine. Um... Some people just say, I don't want him to be created. I think it's mean. It's like saying you don't want a baby to ever sleep on a bed because you think it's mean. So you're going to put him in a crib because you think it's mean. I mean, it's a learning experience. Dogs, just like kids, need to learn to be independent. There are some things they're always going to be codependent on until they're adults, and that's perfectly fine. And I'm not saying to completely eliminate those things, but it's also super important to develop a sense of independence in your child and your dog so that they can say, oh, you know, some scary things happen that I'm not sure of, but I've overcome some scary things like learning how to sleep in my own bed or um, I don't know, whatever it could be, saying hi to a new teacher, um, those type of things. When they overcome those things, there is a sense of joy and accomplishment and pride that you can't give they have to experience. And when dogs start to learn to accept their crate as a positive thing, as something that is a sanctuary for them, as something that they're never going to be harmed in, they start to have this sense of pride of, I got this. I know how to keep myself safe. Bye, Felicia. And they can just excuse themselves to their crate for that alone time so that they can get some R&R, &R, just relax and recharge, right? Like I need to take a breather. There's some stressful kids here that are bothering me. And when I'm calmed down, I'll go back out and join the party. Um, let's see. They don't like it. The owners can't sleep. We totally get it. So we've talked about the reasons why it's so important. And we talked about some of the excuses we get. Now, I have seen and met dogs that have never been crated, whether they're outdoor dogs or they're dogs in the house. And while some people may go through life never needing to crate their dog, it's a possibility. I'm not saying it's not. But for us, the risk is big enough that there is a chance we travel with our dog. So there's a big chance that Morgan's going to need to be crated when we are either not home because we have dog sitters coming to take care of her or if we are traveling and we need her to stay in a crate at the Airbnb. So right. there, there are, uh, sorry, I heard a sound in the background. There are instances for us that are very, um, possible and common. Um, but even if they're not so present for you guys, can you, can you say that your dog is never going to be crated at the vet? Or if you have a dog that needs to get groomed, are you going to say that they're never crated at the groomer? Or if the groomer's just letting the dogs run free after they're cut until you come pick them up. That's a little nerve wracking to me because the groomer can't watch those dogs where they have people, employees that are constantly hundred percent of the time watching the dogs and their behavior to make sure everybody's fine and no fights happen your dog's probably going to be crated or um, they need to be crated for the dryer um, cage thing that most dogs hate. Um, but whatever it is, like there are times in your dog's life, very possible times in your dog's life that they're going to have to be crated. And our whole take on the crate is that it shouldn't have to be a permanent thing. For some dogs, it absolutely is. Um, our pit bull caster always wanted his crate. Even when we were home, if we were getting ready to leave, he'd go put himself in his crate. Um, and sometimes he'd even like paw, paw the door closed, like, yep, go ahead and latch me in here so I know I'm safe. He's a very anxious dog, so he knew that his crate was his safe spot, and he was going to use that to protect himself from whatever imaginary fears might present themselves when we're not home. So some dogs may need that crate as a crutch or a lifeline, and please don't take it away from those dogs just because you don't want them to have the crate. Some dogs are not independent. Some dogs are not leaders. And to put that kind of pressure on them is going to either intensify their anxious, anxiety-type behaviors or uh, 
to stress them out to the point that they start making bad behaviors that they wouldn't have previously done. Um, and then there's dogs like Morgan who could, pff, she could care less. If we were burglari burglarized, I don't think she would wake up. Honestly, she'd probably just sleep through it and snore the whole time. And then when they left, she'd be like, who, who, who damaged the house? Um, so not all dogs care. Not all dogs are anxious. Not all dogs need that crate to feel safe. Morgan can sleep anywhere and feel safe. But it's just the point that there are going to be times she needs to be created. And we want to make sure that she is okay with that. Um, what else? Okay, so if your dog has mild anxiety in the crate, how do you start to get them to like the crate? All good things happen in the crate. Dinner time, breakfast time, all happens in the crate. And you can do that a couple different ways. You can just put their bowl, put their bowl in there and feed them. Um, you can let them have fun with it, which it may get a little messy, um, but they, they usually come out and clean it all up anyways. But put them in the crate, literally just dump their food on the, the plastic tray of the crate. And it's called feed the chickens. They have to just pick up each kibble one by one and they like turn and they get all excited and there's fun stuff happening there. And it's just a fun way to start to um, show the crate in a positive light that look, <laughs> great things happen here. Um, you can put ice cubes in there if it's a, play, a plastic bottom. Um, that's really fun because they're really slippery. And so um, the dogs have to kind of race all over um, trying to get the ice cube that's slipping all over. Um, Kongs, you can, so Kongs have like the skinny hole in the bottom and the big fat hole on top. Um, you can put it upside down and put saran wrap around it. So the big, big hole is on the top. Put the saran wrap around it and you can fill it up with water and you can put a couple pieces of kibble in there or a little bit of peanut butter if your dog's not overweight, which... Most dogs are overweight, so don't do the peanut butter. Um, if your dog's overweight, just do the ice. Dogs love ice. It's healthy. It's not going to make them fat. It's a great thing. Uh, but put it in the freezer for a couple hours. When it freezes or when it's frozen, um, when you put your dog in the crate, you can give them that Kong that's filled with ice, and they'll be licking it and trying to bite the ice out. Um, and that can last for 20 minutes, 40 minutes, however long it takes for the ice to melt, depending on the size of your dog. And the... Um, intensity of which they're trying to get the ice out. But there's a lot of great ways to introduce the crate in a positive light, starting small and working your way up to larger um, areas. So throughout the day, we might just take a dog down to its crate and be like, crate, the dog goes in. Maybe it resists at first because it's like, nah, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't really like my crate. And as soon as the dog goes in, we say break and they get to come right back up. And they're like, huh, that's all I had to do. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I survived. Um, or it might be um, you know, putting them in their crate and closing the door for five minutes with that conch full of ice water or frozen ice that they have to um, to get out. And your dog might panic at first, but then he's going to be like, huh, what's this yummy thing in here? And he's going to be distracted. And when your dog's distracted by that Kong, I would open the door. And if your dog comes out with the Kong, I would tell the dog to drop pick up the Kong, put it back in there. And your dog might just follow it right back in and continue chewing it with the door open. I just want your dog to know whether the door's closed or open, it's still a safe place to be. Just because I open the door doesn't mean you need to rush out for fear of your life. Like, it's cool. Um, if <laughs> After we do this exercise a few times and the dog goes in, um, I have found that they just look at me like, yeah, I'll come out when the ice is gone. Cool, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, but just little things like that, don't start only crating them at night. So you guys have to suffer through the entire night because you haven't done any exercises with your dog during the day. Um, some dogs don't like bedding, some dogs do. If your dog has a history of chewing up bedding or pushing it all to one side to lay on the hard crate floor bottom, then don't be bedding in there. Stop making it about you. Learn what your dog likes and doesn't like. Be, object be objective and look at them and say, <laughs> it seem like he's enjoying the bed because he pushes it all over there or some people say well he likes to push it over there so I'm going to keep putting it in <sighs> he can push <laughs> he can push stuff out of his crate does he do does he go in your room and push all your blankets to one side of the bed no um he's just doing it because he doesn't want to lay on them because some dogs like the hard floor that is natural to them so and some dogs like to lay on a bed outside of the crate Morgan does but she does not like to lay in a bed in her crate it's weird. I know. I don't understand it, but I know my dog and I've given her plenty of chances to prove me otherwise. And every time she has pushed it out of her way to lay on the hard floor. That's fine. It's her choice, right? I'm not going to force comfort upon her, but she's perfectly comfortable without it, right? That's again, just our human side of us trying to uh, personify our dogs and make our wants and our likes the same or are the same as our dogs. That just isn't true. They have their own likes and dislikes. So um, other crate games you can play. 
high value food. Um, we can use human food. So Morgan's is carrots. She loves carrots in all capital letters, loves carrots. Um, for some dogs, it could be lunch meat. It could be um, freeze dried liver, gross, but they love it. Usually the stinkier the smell of the treat, the more your dog's gonna like it. Um, and so what you would do with those high value treats, the only time your dog gets them is for the crate game. And you're just gonna throw a piece in there. Wait. <laughs> Your dog is going to go through a mental turmoil of, ooh, I don't like my crepe, but the, but the treat's right there. It's so good, but I don't like my crepe, but it's right there, but I don't like my crepe, but it's there. Okay, I'm going to go get it, and they'll go get it and come out, and then I'd give them another piece. Great job. Look at you. You're so good. You're so confident. What a big, what a big dog. What a big boy. What a big girl. Whatever your dog is, like that's the time you give them lots of praise, and you just keep doing this exercise until your dog's like, yeah, throw it in there. Throw it in there. I want to go get it. Come on. Um, and then you put those treats away, and they don't get them for the rest of the day. They don't get them to go potty. They don't get them to, to, to sit or lay down. Like They only get them for the crate, and you just start to have very special things that you save for the crate. That's it's that simple. Like, don't complicate it. Don't make yourself suffer by only putting your dog in the crate at night without trying to ever develop a positive relationship with the crate between you or between your dog and the crate. So um, I'm kind of going off on rambles now, but my whole point is please don't make crate excuses for your dog. There may be a time that your dog needs to be crated. And all we want to know is that your dog can be crated safely and comfortably for an extended period of time. Once your dog's doing that and it doesn't have any issues, then you can start letting it sleep in your bed again, or you can start leaving the door open at night for it to be free. But I just want to know, we just want to know that your dog can handle it. So when that rare time or that emergency situation comes up, there's not going to be added stress to your dog. The crate is not going to be the, the biggest problem for your dog. And hopefully the crate is going to be the biggest sanctuary and safety net for your dog during that time of crisis, right? We all need a safety blanket when we're feeling a little scared. I want that to be your dog's crate because that's where they may need to be during that difficult time. What better safety blanket, right? So if you have any questions about this or if you have a specific question about your dog's behavior in the crate or Whatever it is, please post in the comments. Um, I would love to do a follow-up next week, um, a follow-up live video to answer those questions for you. Um, and if I don't get any questions or concerns, we'll have a new topic next week. So um, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I hope this helps you understand the value of the crate. Even if your dog is not liking it right now, you always have the option to, to hire a professional that can help this be the most peaceful solution for your dog so your dog doesn't keep re-injuring themselves. But it's super important to crate your dog. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.